All right, so we're gonna be doing some beer tasting today. Something I have, don't really do on the channel. Um, it's kind of a new thing, but these are all the beers that we picked out, hand-picked. This is my buddy Mike. He's up. It's kind of new to the YouTube thing, so you're gonna see his face on this one for sure. Um, so these beers are all different percentages. We'll go over the different types of beers that we have, um, where they're from, read a little bit about them, and do some taste testing of each of them. So we got all of our beers nice and cold set up for us. And then uh, we have our cups. So we'll be tasting each beer from um, each one of these bottles. So, how do you want to start? Um, from the left to the right, why not? Okay. Or maybe so, in the opposite direction for you. We so. got this pretty cool uh, beer opener here. Batman. The Batmobile. Batmobile. <laughs> and there's a uh, bottle opener on the bottom. And it's magnetic, so it attaches to your refrigerator. So I'll go ahead and introduce this one real quick. I've actually wanted to try it. So it's called, well first I'll show it to you here. So this is called Born and Raised IPA. And it's an India Pale Ale bro brewed right here in Spokane. And it's 7% uh, by volume. And so it's got a little, uh, little notation on the back here. So Born and Raised is about knowing who you are and celebrating where you're from. This classic IPA combines the citrus and pine character of Washington grown Cascade, Columbus, and Chinook hops with expertly crafted pale Munich and caramel malts. Cheers to your hometown. So as I mentioned, brewed right here in Spokane, Washington. So I'm gonna give this a quick try here. What's the percentage on that one? Seven. Seven percent? Oh, that might <laughs> hurt a little bit in the morning. But we just gotta be careful, right? And watch out for the kids. Yeah, we've got six beers total. So this is quite a bit of beer for two people to choke down in the setting, but we'll definitely uh, let you know our taste preferences on these bad boys. But it's Labor Day weekend, so who's counting? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll kind of pour that nice and slowly. You know, you don't want too much foam or anything. Hopefully you can see that all right there. I'll just put a little sample in there. So a lot of foam, so you want to kind of let that settle a little bit. And it's, pretty, it's a nice amber color, so. Not too dark. Not too dark, it smells pretty decent. There are definitely hops in here. So let's give this a try and see what happens. So, as I said, we're gonna have a little bit of sample of this. Again, this is the Born and Raised IPA, uh, local here to Spokane, Washington, so. Not bad. It's definitely got some uh, strong hops to it, like I mentioned. It tastes pretty bright. As far as the actual tastes in here, a little citrusy, definitely not too bad. I'm trying to see what all is in here. That... I can smell it. It's very citrusy smelling for yeah. me. I'm just trying to see what other tastes are actually in here. But I can definitely tell you right now, it's a, it's a great sipping IPA. So it's cool for like that Friday night or whatever, you know, when you just want to sit around and chat with friends or whatever it is, and you can just, you want to enjoy a nice smooth IPA, this would be the way to go. So um, how much was that one? Do you think this one was probably about three or $4? Um, a lot of these are about three or $4. Yep. So it's a, uh, as big as that bottle is, I think you're definitely getting a lot of bang for your buck there. So definitely try that one out. So what's the brewing company? Does it say on here? Yeah, should be on the front. No Lee Brewing Company. No Lee, no lie. No lie. Yeah, No Lie Brew House. My English is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so No Lie Brew House, and it's this is in Spokane. Yeah, it's so. got the gondolas and the clock tower from downtown Spokane on there, so that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. Just yep. got a local brew like that. That's right. So yeah, you definitely can't go wrong with this. So, all right. Your next. Your all right, one. let me crack one of these bad boys. So, out of the three that I got, we'll go with the Arrogant Bastard Ale first. So this one, um, I thought was kind of interesting because the price was very cheap, obviously four bucks. There's the front end of it. So the back of it, when I was reading it, the front um, has the Arrogant Bastard uh, logo and then it says 7.2 alcohol per volume. Um, you're not worthy is what it says. And then on the back, quite a tale. Um, this is an aggressive beer. You probably won't like it. It's quite doubtful that you have the taste or sophistication to be able to appreciate an ale of this quality and depth. So right there, 
I had to try it just to see if it was worth anything. Um, this one. So arrogance, they actually have a de definition of, from the uh, dictionary, that the qu or quality of being arrogant, uh, hefty, undue assumption, overbearing conceit. Hmm. Uh, drink fresh is what it says. Except we eat fresh. And brewed and bottled by arrogant <coughs> consortia. It's in, from California. And Richmond, made in the USA. So, like I said, there's the logo for you. Let's try it out. See what we're getting ourselves into on this one. Pull up. All right. Ooh, look at that. Definitely lays on thick. <laughs> A lot of foam going on there. <laughs> A lot of bubbly mess. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> that was poured on the side too. So we'll let that kind of work itself out. Very foamy, obviously, and uh, it's a little darker than his. Yeah. You can compare, bring that one up for a second. Yeah. So look how much darker that one is. It's devil's piss. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it needs to hydrate. <laughs> we would suggest that you stick to safer and more familiar territory. Maybe something with a multi-million dollar ad campaign aimed at convincing you it's made in a little brewery or one that implies that their tasteless, fizzy, yellow beer will give you more sex appeal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> perhaps you think multi-million dollar ad campaigns make a beer taste better. Perhaps you're uh, mouthing your words as you read this. So there's a bunch more. Uh, another paragraph to go. But uh, certified independent craft. Still foamy as hell. <laughs> but I think I can get a sip out of there yeah. without sucking in too much foam. Not bad. It doesn't hit too hard. It's definitely like a smooth beer, um, hence all the foam, I believe. But uh, it's got some caramely flavors in there. Nothing really stands out though. It's just, it's not bitter. It's not sweet. It's kind of in the middle. Arrogant Bastard Ale. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the percentage on there? I just saw it looks pretty Yeah, evil. this one's uh, 7.2. Yeah. It's a little stronger than this one, yeah? Yeah, barely. Quite stronger. It's good. Tastes kind of different than stuff I've had before. Arrogant? Nah, not really. So, wouldn't really recommend it, to be honest. Um, just because it's very standard. But uh, for the price, why not? 7.2. Not too happy though? No. Not really. Yeah, that's good. You don't want too many hops. It kind of makes the beer taste a little bitter there, so. Yep. Very smooth. We'll just say it's smooth. Agreed. All right, go ahead and crack open your next one and we'll uh, keep it rolling. Batmobile, please. Uh, Batmobile. All right, here we go. <laughs> so, this one here kind of caught my eye. I think I'd heard about it at one point, but it's called it's from the Big Barn Brewing Company, and it's called Lone, it's a Lone Pine Pilsner, Farm Fresh Beer. And, let's see here, this is brewed in Mead, Washington, uh, so kind of, kind of in the northern part, um, compared to Spokane, what was that, northwest? Yeah, this is basically out in Colbert, Washington, right. uh, where I grew up, right. and it's a place out in the middle of nowhere, kind of on the loop they have out there company that's been taken off pretty good. Big Barn has been cranking out some uh, pretty good drinks and it's very popular up there. So shout out to those guys. Go ahead and tag them in this video and make sure that they see what we're uh, saying about their alcohol. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Mike? <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's do it. 
Yeah, so this is kind of cool. It's got some neat information here, so check this out. So, brewed and bottled by Bodacious Berries, Fruits and Brews, LLC, like I said, in Mead. And I have a little Bible verse here. Speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. Job chapter 12, verse 8. Got some Bible verses on the beer, huh? Yeah, so it's definitely some uh, biblical uh, stuff going on here with the pine tree and everything else. So, here's a little something about the, uh, about the Pilsner. So, here in Spokane County, the pine is king. This tree is considered one of the dominant flora of the high desert transition zone. Early farmers found themselves clearing the land of these trees for cultivation, but often left some of the grandest old pines as fence line or property corner, corner markers. We at Big Barn Brewing are establishing our markers in local craft beer. This clean, traditional German-style Pilsner is an example of one of these. And that's another reason I picked it up. I've, I've, <clears throat> I have a little bit of German in my family, so I'm always up for a German lager. But uh, it says here, bodacious berries, fruits, and brews. So let's just see what kind of stuff it's got in here. 4.4% alcohol by volume. So much lower than this and much lower than that. So let's see what we got going on here. Magnetized. All right, see how it pours. Oh, not bad. So very little foam, mm -hmm. you know, quite clear as you can see. See what she tastes like. Gonna let that sit for a second. Ooh, very nice. It's definitely very, very light. It's all, I would almost liken it to um, like a, if you've ever had like a Polliner um, or a Hofbrau uh, Lager, those are really, really good German beers. Those, those can be found at Total Wine in Spokane Valley if you're a local. Um, maybe almost comparable to Miller Lite as far as just the, the smoothness of it, but yeah, definitely smooth. Much like this one, but just obviously not as dark. So definitely a, a good brew to, to pick up. So that's how I feel about that one. Okay, and that one was a 4% alcohol, so not as much as the others. Um, <clears throat> seems like a lighter one. Right. And uh, still local to this area. Mm -hmm. So the next one I got is called the Spin Cycle Red Ale. It's got a tornado on the front. It's made by the same brew house as the first beer that he tried, No Lie Brew House. And this one is 5.7% alcohol. Uh, gold medal winner. Um, for 2012 and 16, twice in 2012, Great American Beer Festival, Japan International Beer Competition, and Australian International Beer Awards. Extra Special Bitter um, is what they gave it. A tornado of caramel malts carries a rich red hue, complex malt flavors, and a full body. This award-winning red ale will transport you to another place. You're not in Kansas anymore. So basically when I pour this, we're all gonna twist into a tornado and fly off into freaking <laughs> middle of nowhere, I guess, huh? Yeah. So yeah, brew house in Spokane, Washington, made in the USA. Cool. All right, let's crack her open and see what we're working with. Ooh, that is dark. So yeah, that one is almost as dark as my other beer I'm drinking here. Yeah, I guess it is. It's pretty much the same. <laughs> you didn't deviate much. <laughs> but let's go ahead and throw it down and see what happens. <laughs> Sorry, my <sense. laughs> Yeah, this one's a lot um, sweeter than the first beer I had, which is I'm basically compared it to that because it's the first thing I drank. So this one's not as smooth. This is a uh, lighter beer, I would say. And it's got some aftertaste. Not hoppy at all. Just a little bit of after aftertaste of some kind of like, like a beerish. Mm. No caramel or anything like that, no smoky. Yeah, you could throw this down all day. I would say so far that's the best one I've had out of the two. Excuse me. So yeah, alcohol content's a little lower. Another local beer, um, amber red ale. 
And both of these I'm drinking are ales. So yeah, next beer. Sweet. All right, so my last one. So it caught my eye because it's got some huckleberry in it. And I've already had a lot of uh, huckleberry type stuff up uh, up here in the, in the Northwest, especially in North Idaho. There's a huckleberry store just off of I-90. It's called Huckleberry Thicket, if you ever get a chance to check it out. But, uh, you know, they've got everything from huckleberry ice cream to popcorn to just about anything. Hell, candles even. You know, you don't want to eat those, but still they smell good. Uh, so there's that. So this one, it's called Chapel, and it's a Wittbier Ale. So another, uh, another German-related one. Selkirk Abbey Brewing Company. This is 4.9% by volume, and this was actually brewed in Post Falls, Idaho. So I'll show you what that looks like. And let's see if we can find anything out about it right here. Government warning. Okay, we didn't want to ignore that because they're all over the place. We know about those. All right, so it's not for the masses, it's for you. If you've spent any time in the Northwest, you know of our love of the mountain huckleberry. This tiny fruit feeds birds and move, birds and bear alike. It also feeds our hunger to experience the robust land in which we live. From frigid steam and alpine lake to soaring peak and high mountain pasture, the unassuming huckleberry is a welcome sight to all on the trail. Brewed, like I said, brewed and bottled by Selkirk Abbey Brewing Company out there in Post Falls. So. As I said, it's got 4.9% alcohol by volume, so let's give it a shot. I'm actually looking forward to this one. Oh wow, I mean you can already smell the huckleberry oh, yeah. mess off of that. Let's see how this stuff pours. Alright, so... Ooh, so much like the previous lager I just poured. Yeah, all your beers are very light compared to what I'm drinking. Yeah, and these, mind you, were all grabbed at random. You know, it's yeah. not like we had a plan. There was no thought in this stuff. Right. But, uh, okay, so maybe a tad darker than the pine, as you can see. But it definitely has that hint of huckleberry in it, so I can't wait to see how it tastes. All right, let's do this. Wow. All right, so I would highly recommend this. I mean, if you're any sort of uh, Huckleberry fan, then this is definitely the way to go. Like, this is super good. I'll do it one more time to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Now I gotta drink it without spitting it out because I'm laughing too much. <laughs> yeah. So, first reaction, you, uh, if you have a sip, the first thing that hits you is that Huckleberry taste. So it, uh, it's really good, it just covers all the taste buds. It's absolutely delicious. So I would highly recommend this one. So like I said, the Huckleberry uh, Chapel Vit Beer Ale, Selkirk Abbey Brewing Company, Post Falls, Idaho. Check it out. And there's a lot of things you can get online, I'm sure. You can probably pick these up online um, on their right. websites. So look up the No Libraries and which one is this? Post Falls? Yep, Selkirk Abbey. Yep. Yep. So look up those, the Sucker Cabby Brew House, if you want that one. They yeah. were established in 2011, too, so they're fairly new. Yep, have that shipped to your door. Mm -hmm. All right, what you got? All right, give me that uh, Batmobile. Let's crack the racket. All right, so this one is uh, Jamie Pale Ale, and it is. Uh, P-F-R-E-M. Freem? Oh, Freem. Freem? Yep. P silent on that one. So Freem, Jamie Pale Ale. And it is proudly crafted, humbly offered. And did someone say Jamie? <laughs> Freem, Jamie Pale Ale is rife with aromas of Marion berries, strawberry, preserves, blueberries, and lemon. Did you copy me? Lemon balm. <laughs> it finishes juicy, jammy, and fruity. We're jamming. And this one is 5.4% alcohol. Jammy pale. So yeah, I wanted to get one that was a little different than the other two. Um, just so I kind of mix it up a tad bit.
Mm. So I'm not surprised that it's the same color as the one I just drank and considering the description of that one. Yep. So a lot um, lighter than the other two that I'm drinking. Very on par with what he's drinking. Let's go ahead and uh, Yep, it's very fruity. Foam is a little bit uh, less than the other two, which calms down after a while, mm -hmm. as you can see. <laughs> yeah, it's very light. You can taste all the different berries in there, kind of mixed up with a very small alcohol taste. Very citrusy, and you can taste hints of the strawberry and uh, all the other berries in there. That one's really good too. Oh, did you mention to the folks that it's not brewed here in Washington? Where's that brewed at? Um, or uh, Hood River, Oregon. Yeah, produced and bottled by Frame Family Brewers. Say that 10 times fast, Hood River, Oregon. Um, I think, if I have this right, unfortunately I can't remember the name of the uh, sports bar I was at earlier today or else I'd endorse them here, but um, I had a beer very similar to this one today over at that sports bar. Uh, it's in North Spokane, um, but very, very good, very smooth, so you can't go wrong with it. Yeah, and for me, I just like beer that tastes good for the most part. Um, lighter the better, obviously, but when I'm going to have a beer like this, you know, as long as it tastes good, I'm fine drinking it. Or if it has a high alcohol t content, but still has a good taste to it of some sort, or something that's unique, that's what I go for. So what we'll do is we'll taste each one and then um, kind of rank out of the three for each of us which one was our favorite and our least favorite and why. Okay, I'll let the foam settle of course. Cool. So just start from left to right and rank them up? Yep, just tell uh, which one you like the best and the least. Well, let's see. I guess I'll start with this one. So once again, the, the first one I'm having is the, the from, from the Noli Brew House right here in Spokane. So let's give that a shot. That was a little darker. What was it, 7%? Somewhere in there. Yeah, 7% uh, right on. So that was a really smooth taste. It's really heavy, you can really feel it. So I'm gonna probably put that as my number one choice. So, yep. So we'll just kinda move that forward. So once again, putting this one born and raised as my number one choice. Nice. Okay, number two choice, let's see. You know, I don't even know that I have to taste this again, but I will, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, number two for sure, because of the huckleberry. Really, really, really good. It's a little bit different. Yep, and then obviously we know where this is. But frankly, between all three beers that I tried, I, I didn't dislike any of them. So you can't go wrong. Like I said, all these beers were really cheap. I think anywhere from three to four to five dollars. So, like I said, if you're just looking for a nice smooth beer with, uh, if you've got some friends coming over, or if you just want to chill on a Friday night, whatever it is, you definitely can't go wrong with any of these. So, sweet. All right, so out of the three I have, the Fram Spin Cycle and the Arrogant Bastard Ale, I'm gonna start with the Fram. So the Frem is good. It tastes very watery. Spin cycle. Yeah, the spin cycle, I would say, is probably my, my number one out of these three. Because they are a good bastard. Probably go with the uh, the Frem is my number two, and the arrogant bastard as the last. Spin cycle wins. It's just uh, right on, I think, when it comes to a red ale. And the Frem is just a little bit watery on that side. Um, very light tasting, almost like you know a Keystone or a Bud Light or something like that. So 
it's good. It, do, it does have that good taste of those berries and all those different tastes uh, popping out at you, but uh, definitely uh, going to break that spin cycle number one. Now, the Argent Bastard Ale is a little bit too harsh, but it's not too bad. It's still very smooth, um, but it does have like a very thick uh, consistency to it. A little bit too much for my taste buds. So, pick this one up for sure. Pick all these up, as a matter of fact. Right. Um, but that's the winner for me right there. So that's all of our beers ranked, yep. uh, the six that we drank. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Make sure you hit the bell icon for more videos, and uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.